Let's talk about heat energy and chemical reactions. And the first thing we want to say is that a reaction can produce energy or take in energy. And what better way to show you that than to actually do some reactions? I've got, uh, so, so for the first one, I'm going to dissolve some calcium chloride. And my calcium chloride, which is food grade, used for winemaking and home brewing, and also cheese making, by the way, which is what I like to do. Um, and I've got some water. Then I've got about 75 milliliters here. And I've got a uh, temperature tester. And if I hold, turn it on, and then uh, it actually measures parts per million for water hardness testing. But if I press um, mode twice, I get temperature in degrees Celsius. And if I put that into my water, I can see that my water is pretty much room temperature, 20.3, somewhere around there. And now I'm going to take that out and set it down. And now I'm going to add a spoonful. I don't know a spoonful, but some, I'm going to put it on a spoon. Let's see, how about that much? Probably about five or less grams. I'm going to put it in. Uh, and then I'm going to mix it to get it to dissolve. And dissolving this takes a couple of uh, minutes, but we've got nothing but time. JK, LOL. All right, so uh, let's see. We've dissolved it a little with that. Let's see what's happening to our temperature. Yeah, it takes a temperature tester takes a minute too. Temperature is going up, not phenomenally. Looks a little more, but I can't dip this thing all the way into it. So yes, you can see that the temperature is going up, and the, what is happening is that the dissolving reaction gives off energy, and that makes the solution, the water with the calcium chloride dissolved in it, go up in temperature. I don't know if I've sort of maxed out here. Mix it up a little more, temperature goes up. Eh, two or three degrees already. All right, let's take that out, set it down, dry it off. All right, and so what did we just do there? Oh, I can feel that that's warming up a little bit. So we just dissolved calcium chloride and we can write a dissolving reaction. We've done that before. Calcium chloride solid goes to aqueous things. And since this is an ionic compound, we're going to get calcium ions, calcium 2 plus, and we're going to get two chloride ions. And what's different this time is we're going to put, 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 put plus heat over here. And that means that heat is produced. And some other things, terminology that we have, when heat is produced by a reaction, the reaction is an exothermic reaction. Exo means exit, therm means heat. Heat is exiting the reaction. And um, the uh, so since heat is coming out of the reaction, heat is produced, it is being taken in by the solution so the solution, or the water, but since something's dissolved in it, we'll call it a solution. The solution heats up. Okay, and we'll talk more about this. But let's go to our second demonstration, all with household chemicals. And this one is going to be the reaction of vinegar and baking soda. And vinegar contains acetic acid. And there's two ways that we can write acetic acid, HC2H3O2 uh, or CH3COOH. Both of these are the same letters, uh, same atoms and elements just rearranged. Um, but I tend to like this one right here 
This one tends to be more like the acids that we're used to showing, but however you do it, um, yeah. yeah, let's use this one down here. So aqueous plus baking soda, which will be a solid this time, HCO3, that's gonna be a solid. And if you've ever made a baking soda volcano before, I know my daughter and I have many, many times, um, you know that one of the products here is going to be a gas. Let's just go ahead and fill in the products. This is a double replacement reaction, actually, where we've got our Na plus and our HCO3 minus ions. Here it's a little different because we've got our acetate ion with an H at the end. But we have the plus here. We pair it with the negative, the uh, cat and the anions here make sodium acetate, which is as anything that has sodium in it or anything that has acetate is soluble and therefore aqueous, plus H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, and ding, we think back to our double replacement gas evolving reactions, and we immediately, re immediately replace carbonic acid, H2CO3, with water and carbon dioxide. So this will be gas. This is our reaction here, and let's see what happens when we do it. I've got my vinegar, about 75 milliliters. Can't tell, but sure enough, here's my big bottle of vinegar. I've got my baking soda right here, about 15 grams, and here's my box of baking soda. And... All right, so in order to tell what happens to temperature, we're going to test our temperature initially. And our temperature is about 20 degrees. And we're gonna add some of this. Don't bubble too much. Don't bubble too much. Ooh, I'm getting nervous. All right, good, it didn't overflow. Started at 20. Underwhelming so far, I know. Takes a minute to get down there too. Down to 19.2. 19.1. Let's live dangerously. Let's add a little bit more, although not too much. Oop, don't let the whole thing get coated. What do we got so far? 18.6. 18.4. Slowly it creeps down. We could add more and we can make a heck of a volcano with what's left, but uh, let's hope that, yep, 18 degrees. Uh, go ahead and write down that the lowest temperature we got to in this short demo was 17.7 degrees. And write that on your page. Now, this one cooled down, so we have some notes to write up there, but let's go ahead and keep writing here. So first off, the solution cooled down as heat was removed from the solution and went into the reaction. Was removed from solution or taken from solution and went into the reaction. And so the way that you show that heat goes into a reaction is you put heat as a reactant. So heat goes into the reaction. Right. And uh, another what, what we call this then when heat goes into a reaction is we call it an endothermic reaction.
Endo means into, thermic means heat. Heat goes into the reaction. So when heat is produced, it's an exothermic reaction, and that heat comes out of the reaction and actually heats up the solution. Where, uh, and so that's, that's our sign that we have an exothermic reaction. The reaction solution gets warmer, it heats up. We have an endothermic reaction. That means that the solution cools down because the energy from the solution is taken from it and goes into the reaction.